are not leaving it. The people with Shia apocalypse are not joining it. There's a Venn diagram. Right. <laughs> so effectively, any prior affiliations, nothing has changed. Because that would demand, like, serious commitment. That's just not <laughs> <laughs> And also, like, the, the way channel also works, just for clarity's sake, we, there is no exclusivity contract, contrary to what I find people often believe. It is a network. We are not employees. It is you a do network. not own us. Yeah. It is a network <laughs> of independent contractors. And that is also a Now, uh, the reason we started this website is because, um, uh, a few reasons. Channel Awesome, especially the, the boys in Chicago, kind of wanted to move in a new direction. This being, um, they wanted to do more original content. They are still doing reviews, but they're less focused on it. And I had a bunch of producers that I liked that were not on channel, also that I wanted to promote, so I thought um, uh, we could start a site that was more in the vein of amateur comedy academia rather than a straight up comedy website, which that guy with the glasses is. Um, so I'm going to let everybody introduce yourselves. Some of them you probably know, some of them you may not. So I guess we'll start with Todd. Hi, 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 I've done reviews of pop songs for uh, many years now, and I reviewed some older stuff too. Um, I like you guys. I <laughs> <laughs> like you too. I like you too. All of us, really? Mm. Yes. Yes, all of us. Love it, Carlos. All right. Thank you. This, this is Kyle, Red Kyle. Round of applause for Todd. Okay. My name is Kyle. I have the really stupid name of Owen Citizen. It makes less sense to me the longer I keep it. <laughs> I do a show called Browse Held High where I talk about um, RT movies and everything that encompasses, you know, American indie, foreign films, that kind of stuff. I occasionally um, sing. I occasionally uh, get really sad on camera and make you sad. Um, and I have been doing this for about two years now. Two years. Oh God. Um, I'm really happy that Ch that shape office has us started up, and I'm really excited to see where this site goes. My name is Lindsay. I uh, put the capital down for the website. <laughs> and I do the nostalgia chin show. Uh, whether it's uh, disco movies from 1980, 
uh, the work of Clive Barker, uh, Twink Light, which is the gay born version of Twilight. Twilight needs more gay lord national resort yeah. convention center. Oh, best joke ever! Yay! <laughs>
film, but they were like romance and drama. It's Nicholas Sparks. And uh, so you kind of you kind of see a lot of that. That said, I think you know there will be interesting films being made that will technically be fantasy, but they won't really live under that umbrella. Um, you, know, you sort of look also like a movie like Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind, which is again technically science fiction, but you don't. It's not marketed like that. They trick you into watching science fiction. I'm not sure what it was marked as. I think it was a romantic comedy. Yeah, it was romantic drama. I remember, I remember it as a comedy. It was hilarious. I saw two different trailers. One was definitely the romantic comedy. Yeah. That made it look super lighthearted. It and had was like light. Light. <laughs> 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 um, but I, I think uh, thing about thing about marketing the way it's done is it does seem to be you know going. I don't want to say singularity, but more and more foxy as time goes on, but uh, that could just be my very narrow view. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hi. Do you think that's part of the uh, sci-fi ghetto and the fantasy ghetto where books and any form of media that's essentially sci-fi or fantasy, the author is in some sort of denial state because the author thinks they've got this perception of sci-fi and fantasy it's kind of similar to the young adult ghetto. It's changing. Like it used to be, oh, you write young adult, you're not a real writer. And nowadays, that's all anyone buys. And I think this sci-fi fantasy, people are hoping that it's going to go the same way because they're a lot of young adult is sci-fi fantasy these days. So they're kind of merging. You're seeing a lot more young sci-fi fantasy that's being really paid acceptable because it is for kids. But we like kids stuff now, so it's not really for everyone. Also, it's different <coughs> books as it is for film in terms of. I'm mostly talking book. about books. Yeah, in terms of the ghetto. Um, I think books are, a lot, are actually a lot more boxy and regimented than uh, film because film, you know, there's a lot of you know unexpected sci-fi works. They don't, you know, we, uh, it can be associated in the lizard brain with the pulpy numbness, but. Um, uh, it does, it, 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 I find it, it, it's, a, it's easier to break out of that with a film than it is with a book because books are like you have to have 150,000 words and you're going to have a dragon on the cover and it's going to be like a big sexy man and it does, you know, it's not so <laughs> yeah. film, the line more is drawn with horror, whereas horror is looked down upon in the horror movies, where the sci fi movies aren't as much, uh, you know, snubbed. They're seen more as just movies, not trash. Before we um, open it up again, what do you guys want to talk about? Movies <laughs> <laughs> coming out this weekend? What's that? Movies <laughs> coming out this weekend? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is coming out this weekend? It's January. Oh, it's yeah. January. Oh, Tom Cruise movie playing. Tom Cruise. Zero Dark. That came out last week. Texas Chainsaw. Oscar Holmes. <laughs> 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 Texas Chainsaw. Oh, yeah. Hey, well, I have seen John Dutton. Yeah. 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 I've seen it. Um, yeah. 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 I've seen it. Yeah. 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 I've seen it. Um, <laughs> I would I would absolutely recommend everyone. Like, so John dies at the end is a is a book by David Wong, uh, who's one of the who's like he's kind of yeah, yeah. Yeah. for uh, for crack. And he wrote it for several years. It's a great book. Absolutely read it. It's it's hilarious and and hands wet and frightening at the same time. It's a beautiful blend of the genres. Uh, the movie is deeply flawed, but just like. Absolutely worth uh, worth watching. Uh, support that kind of independent <coughs> film. It is so weird. You will not see another film like it made anytime soon uh, because Hollywood will not make a movie like that. So support it. It's absolutely worth watching, but it does have some flaws. So it's really good to talk about it as well. We, we, we don't talk about flaws. Who does that? That's for self. <laughs> <laughs> Does it require you to read the book first to understand it, or is it a different type of book? No, no, it does a, it's a really good adaptation. Uh, you, can, you can jump right into it without having uh, read the book, uh, but you'll have, I mean, you'll have more fun if you have read the book, because you can see, like, oh, wow, they stuck really close here, and then they skipped about 800 pages. <laughs>
And I didn't know that was a thing in uh, the Eastern Orthodox Church, at least in Macedonia. So I actually had to cut that line out and save myself a lot of trouble from angry commenters. <laughs> but really, uh, whenever you're looking at a foreign film, in general, it's good to know at least a little bit about the culture that was made. Because all, every piece of art is a product of its culture. Every artist is a product of his or her culture. And um, if you want to understand it better, um, understand their roots. This Which includes is, us. Like, yes. <laughs> I think that, like, uh, it, yeah, that's one of the more frustrating things whenever you kind of get the anti-curious crowd, I guess, that that kind of, they don't like the, um, you're, th you know, you're thinking too hard about this thing, you're reading too much in into it, and sometimes you are, but just as often you're not. Maybe a Serbian film actually had a point. <laughs> 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 Maybe no. I actually had some form of PTSD that may color his views. That's just, and I, that's why I didn't want to make my survey film to be used just a whole lot of rent. So I, I, so I, can, I uh, take that off at the end. Well, I read too much into things because that's more fun to me. And that's why we started this website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the kangaroo. Was, uh, how much help I needed to get into it. It was really badass, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was so happy. <laughs> like, once he actually got it out, he was like, <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't face. let me keep it. Aww. Aww. It's like in a storage room in Chicago somewhere. <laughs> uh, you have first. That's a question. Oh, okay. Okay. Bullet head, yeah. Okay. Um, this is for Elisa. Um, I love your vampire reviews, and I was just wondering if, because of the negative flack from Twilight, if you were worried about people getting into your show and all the amazing media that you cover. If I'm worried about them, what? Like, like the baggage, not, the vampire baggage from Twilight? Yeah. Like oh, not, people are <coughs> like, oh, Yeah. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of people tell me, you got me to like vampires again. Yeah, I used to hate vampires, but I watched your stuff and then you know, changed my mind. Or, um, so it's... Despite that, people have still been watching me. I don't know that if there are still people out there who don't because of that, but all of that baggage that's in the air in the world with vampires right now is why I started the show in the first place, just because that was really interesting to me in a cultural sense, and I wanted to talk about you know what's happened to the world of vampires and society and pop culture. So if that keeps people away, then it just proves the point of why I'm doing the show in the first place, I guess. A lot of the people, the reason people hate Twilight is because it's disrespect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it disrespects everything. Uh, I mean, this is for uh, you, Elise. Uh, speaking of like, vampire stuff, have you ever looked at any of the vampire role playing bit games? Like stuff like The World of Darkness by Michael? Um, I used to play Requiem, like in a lark, um, for a short time. And so that's mostly what I'm familiar with, not the old world dark, it's just the new stuff. And you know, I've done the research into it to support points that I've made and talk about other things. Um, so I'm familiar with it, but not a pro. Would you ever consider doing an entire episode dedicated to that? Because there's a lot of things they say in those games are different than from the movie. It's, yeah, it's a very interesting world they've created. But doing episodes on things like games is difficult because working with a visual medium like video essays as we do, you have to have something visual to show. So what do you show for a game unless I were to be able to film a game and play, which is a possibility. Um, I would have to show on screen rather than just talking head or maybe book covers. Uh, it's like when I was talking about the uh, book sales of Twilight, I had nothing to show on screen, so I showed a bunch of cakes. <laughs> It's just, you know, once you start writing things and you realize, crap, there's no visual representation of this thing I'm talking about, what do I show on screen? That's why I don't talk about books, even though there are so many vampire books and the game as well. Um, I'd like to, I just would have to figure out how to do it. Well, there is Kindred the Embrace. Yeah, but I would talk about that as a show, not as a game. <laughs> I have mentioned it. Um, you go first. Yeah, um, I have two parts. Uh, 
favorite thing you reviewed and least favorite thing you reviewed. What's that? Uh, favorite thing you reviewed and least favorite thing you reviewed. Uh, Frasier. Yeah. Um, to be honest, like the favorite uh, media or the favorite review of the media? Favorite media. It's like, uh, <laughs> what, have, what have I done? Uh, <laughs> so I feel like, I, I feel like the answer is the same thing. I read reviews. Uh, Freddie got fingered for both. <laughs> <laughs> Good. 
uh, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, yeah, and also, yeah, Ted Glazer. Really? You seriously? <laughs> 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 hey, if you haven't seen it, Ed also has a few excellent shows on Blitter, including Deja Vu, which I'm a big fan of, and also Ninja the Mission Force, which is doing Woo! Well. What's a ninja? Woo! What's a ninja? <laughs> Just a fair tale. Uh, <laughs> Woo! Let's talk about you guys. Right. Um, you brought up an interesting point earlier about John Dies at the end, uh, recommending the film uh, despite its flaws, which is the sort of thing that Hollywood doesn't do. Um, is there a line for you guys where maybe you would not recommend a film uh, despite it not doing what Hollywood does, uh, despite it having good intentions, um, being indie, uh, you know, people want to support indie, but Absolutely. It's not worth it. Because it's boring and uninteresting. Here, here's the thing with me, and maybe this is just me being like a boring little sycophant, but I have worked on enough goddamn worthless independent films that <laughs> I don't differentiate between whether it's studio or indie or not. Just just, just personally, because I, I don't know, just because it's not in the studio doesn't mean it's worthwhile. That said, the studios do impose a lot of really strict structures. So, you know, like you were saying, thank you, had a counterpoint. Um, for me, the line really comes down to, it, it's more of a universal line for me as well, that if something is boring and uninteresting, uh, but at the same time, John dies at the end, has that special greed of weird that you're just, you're never going to see. A woman explodes into snakes. <laughs> what? If there's a monster made out of meat, uh, now you have to go see it. Like, turns into a fetus, and, <laughs> and the, the main <laughs> characters, like, basically annihilate an entire universe simply because they need to get their basketball back. Um, you know, it, it, it goes off the beaten track in a way that, uh, that is worth supporting. So that there is a level of independence. It's like, okay, there is a line for me where it's like, yes, it is worth supporting independent producers and creators because like, if they're making interesting things that you wouldn't find elsewhere, I do not unilaterally support independent film because I have made really crappy independent stuff before. So. Another thing is, you gotta bear in mind, most independent film, not most, but many, are funded by like trust fund babies. And <laughs> so, yeah, and, and, like, so they, they, vanity projects. Yeah, they're vanity projects. And so they, I think there's a reason why like the starving artist that is, you know, burdened with talent and vision can't get his movie made, but some like, you know, rich dude who, Park Avenue's all like, you know, I got the script, let's do it. And, yeah. yeah. And then no one ever hears it. Uh, it's okay. terrible. Um, I, I read a review once who said something like that, that I completely agree with was something like, I hate bad Hollywood movies, but I hate bad indie movies. He was saying that about We Are the Spring, which he reviewed. <laughs> like, there's, you know, he, he said he said something like, you know, like, I used to believe that anything strange was like, that was something valuable on its own. And then I watched Weird and Strange, and I think I've been fully disabused of that notion. Like, <laughs> like, you know, sometimes you see films like that take huge chances, and there's something in that, but sometimes it fails horribly, and not in a good way, or an interesting way, or a useful way. Sometimes it just fucking sucks. <laughs> I'm actually, I actually probably will not tell anyone not to watch a movie. Uh, because, I mean, pretty much everything I look at uh, has some kind of, I can find some nugget of value in it, even if it's, like, sliver. Um, so, I mean, anything about it would be good, I encourage you all to watch, honestly. <laughs> Go see Trash Hunters. Trash Hunters is a brilliant horror film. <laughs> I'm serious. Those images just stick with you. They, it's a, it is a terrifying thing. It's, it, it succeeds in what it sets out to do. It is a unique vision that really will not leave you. It's trash. Well, actually, apparently the original, um, I didn't find this out until I finished the review, but uh, apparently he wanted to just leave the test tapes of the movie lying on sidewalks. <laughs> the idea being that you know, people would find and watch and then go through the whole thing. My God, these people. <laughs> then he realized he couldn't keep a copyright on it, so he scrapped that idea. But um, but I will never not recommend the movie because you know, I, 
I appreciate hard work, even if that hard work is of a, of a baseless vision. What about the big fucking movie? Would you recommend that? Please say it. Don't use it. Viewing party. <laughs> watch it. Don't think worse. <laughs> no, I, I'll actually go with uh, Kyle on this. Um, I will watch anything once. Uh, you know, because you, you never know when, what's going to happen. Like, you can't say this is going to be completely useless if you haven't experienced it. So, um, and everything has something useful to say, or maybe not useful, but worth thinking about, even if the, the, the writers didn't think about it very hard and they failed horribly. <laughs> even that's instructive in its own right. Yeah, I, I feel like we've all been very inspired by the worst Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think even the worst movies have value as an example of what not to do. You <laughs> still learn from them. I, I wasn't kidding, by the way. We've had very, very long conversations these are, they, uh, we're, we're going to keep milking that. <laughs> <laughs> I have thought more about Transformers, Twilight, or Avatar than things I've actually, than anything I've actually enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a terrible webcomic that I read, that I'm not going to name, because I don't want you to look at it, ever, but like, I just, become addicted to it every single day, like just, day by day, I keep looking at it. Like, I didn't say anything. <laughs> and, and you know, it's just what we like. Every time I look, it's like, wow, this just keeps getting worse and worse, and I just can't look away. <laughs> and I found it very useful. I, I understand more about comics now than I ever did. Who had the ball to review the PJ Gray first? That's actually probably going to be me. <laughs> When I was, um, <laughs> back in May, I was in a musical about Dominic Cassis in New York City, and on set, on, on stage as a prop, we had Fifty Shades of Grey as a gag, because we were like, you know, because when you're a dominatrix, you spend most of your time sitting and waiting, um, or, or so the one who wrote the play said. And we couldn't get through the fucking book. Like, every once in a while, we try. It's a slog. I mean, and it's terrible. I can't understand why anyone can go past the first page. Twilight like, yeah, has a plot. You know, like, it's, it's a weak, flaccid one, but it's there. Yeah. It's, it's, like, you know, towards the end, it's like, oh, there's, like, three vampires that are bad. Oh, no, no, we better run for them. But it's there. It's a great. There's no driving force. They just are. It's almost kind of like an art film character piece where they just sit in a room and talk and they just... <laughs> <laughs> the whole setup at the beginning with the, like how... Normally in, in, in narrative you have an inciting incident that really like gets the plot going, you know, gets the engine moving. There is none. <laughs> they just, it's like, it's the most contrived, it's like, oh, you have a reason to go here and then it just, he just starts talking, and they just start talking, and then they just drift from place to place, and it's like, oh look, we're in the same room together. There's also... Let's interact. Jose. <laughs> Jose. <laughs> he, he's her Mexican friend. He says things like, Dios mio, and ay caramba. And he wants to go out with her, but she doesn't like him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, it is it is utterly painful to read, uh, and and I couldn't I couldn't get farther than thirty pages into the second book. But it, 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 I'm I'm excited for the movie simply because the everything that makes Twilight mockable and like that you can just sort of bitch about. This has it in like. Two scoops. I also like I, I have plans for a project that I'm tentatively calling Fifty Shades of Green. Which is going to be uh, I, I'm, I this is gonna be very experimental, but it's basically I'm going to it's gonna be an interactive project where we democratically write a book. Basically, I'm gonna, because I tried this on Twitter one night and it was so it was much fun. Amazing. And, um, <laughs> and Sam is doing it too. Basically, where we, uh, the, the project is gonna be 
Twilight with aliens. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to try to write, and I'm going to document the process of, every, of getting the plot together. We're going to try to create not what we think is mockably bad, but what we think will mockably sell. And actually, we're going to document the process of like trying to get an agent see if it gets published. And uh, it, it won't, but you know, it, the, it'll be the, the oh, process. So, you <laughs> so keep an eye out for that. <laughs> All right. Uh, you, Okay, um, first of all, hey, thank you for <laughs> beginning the recovery process for me from the loose, floppy asshole that was the Lorax movie. I know! <laughs> that was a offensive. That was deeply offensive. <laughs> That's a woman and like my oh, God, least favorite. I forgot about that. Um, I have a question. I have a question for just about everyone here. You brought up Red Letter Media and how they've kind of like expanded this thing, but I feel like you guys have kind of helped pioneer to some extent, which is like criticism that doubles as entertainment in its own right, and you know, in the case of something like the Plinket Reviews, has its own little narrative built into it. So what do you guys think the future of that is? I guess we kind of wanted to talk about that, but I think the thing is, and that, that's I guess why I, I wanted to temper expectations when we started the site, because we wanted to you know, have, a, have a specific vision when we started it, uh, I think because like that guy with the glasses was a very broad comedy site that turned into a review site, um, perhaps somewhat inadvertently, uh, it just attracted that kind of producer. And whereas we were like, we we want to um, expand on it. Uh, so push up the door. <laughs> Someone's having like a side. Just be. Someone's playing that fiddle. Um, we, I'm just like, and then the squeaky, I mean, no, squeak, uh, uh, <laughs> um, so I, we, but I, I find the, you know, the accessibility of criticism, because really before this, in a, in a pop world, uh, or in the pop culture world, really all you got was, uh, you know, Roger Ebert and that sort of thing was all like sort of the mainstream consumer would be exposed to, but now it's, it's opening up a little because of this. So I feel like it, it, it could be a, a phase, you know, that is a very real possibility, but it, it could also be sort of heading in that, like, direction, because I've, I've had a lot of people say, like, you got me interested in, you know, reading books about film history and film academia, and I'm going to go to school for it, and I'm like, oh, no. Don't be interested. But um, I, I think it, we don't know. We have hopes. But we also, uh, you know, are open to the possibility that it is just sort of like a, a trend on the internet right now that you know we're riding the wave of, and you know we'll fade when it does. So I, that's kind of why I wanted to develop it and make it, um, you know, make a home for people that can make, make stuff that's a little bit substantive but also entertaining. So you know, general, you know, Joanne and Cletus might be interested in it. <laughs> that's classist. <laughs> uh, are there going to be any more appearances from Pat P. Cash Cashman in any of the videos? Oh, Pat Cash! He, he wants to. He, he's, he works a lot. Like, I saw him uh, election night. Um, and we keep talking about it because nothing has ever made me laugh harder than just him and his hoodie. With a, if you don't remember it, if you've seen the Showgirl trivia, this is the guy that like, was the Berkeley. And uh, he was the guy that was always reading a book and be like, I'm on my period. <laughs> <laughs> and he just has such natural timing, but yeah. He, he, he's busy, but I, I keep trying to think of ways to bring him back in. I would like to, is the answer. No, no plans, though. Um, he braced it. Oh, oh. You yeah, pick, yeah, pick right here. Sorry, I can. Sorry, Ash. Sorry, Ash. Uh, Ash can go, Ash can go next. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, this actually something I think that would apply to the whole panel just uh, because some things I think overlaps is musical theater it seems to be. Mm -hmm. And since uh, Les Miserables came out, there seems to be a difficulty in adapting the flavor of musical theater into a film adaptation. What do you think would it take to take something that was essentially made for Broadway and turn it into a proper theatrical film? I don't know, I mean, it's not been done before. There's no, there's no end of 
good musical comedy, I mean, a musical theater adapted the film. Um, some things won't adapt.
Richard. Mainly more of a comment followed by an admittedly weak question. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite review of yours was the Ender's Game slash Chick fil A's. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that was really good. I've sort of had that debate in my mind a lot myself. Uh, so I guess my weak question is what are your what are your expectations of that movie coming out? Oh, yeah. really? Oh, who's directing it? Yeah, I've been Francis Lawrence. Oh, is that right? Is it? Sounds good. It's the guy that did the Wolverine movie. Didn't it? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. yeah. Right, same here. Well, Gavin the director of us. We're not wild about him. Like, we've, he's only done two movies, too, right? No, he did the third one called Rendition. Oh, like, I didn't see that. One. That no one saw. <coughs> one. Yeah, we, we weren't wild about Soxy. We really weren't wild about Wolverine, so I might be nervous to say I'm terribly optimistic about it, even though. Um, I feel like Lionsgate is a good studio for adaptation. They've done a good job of what's been used. But it's, it's a very strange production in that they started <coughs> production really, really early and they've been really tight lipped about it. So um, I also don't know what to expect. I haven't heard anything except for the casting. I well, think Harrison Ford is a good one. Yeah. Well, Wolverine, the Wolverine movie, I think, definitively showed that Gavin yeah, Hood doesn't particularly like genre movies. <laughs> he didn't want to make a comic book movie. He wanted to make another, you know, Oscar winner, and he somehow got attached to Wolverine for God knows what reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not expecting good things on Avengers Game, basically just because he doesn't seem like he's all that interested in making, you know, sci-fi movies that are any fun, which Ender Game is not like Wolverine. It's, it's, it's Deeper than that, but it's it's also a sci-fi movie. And I'm I also very know. nervous about how much he gets or likes or has watched anything. <laughs> <laughs> I also really hate to think that Orson Scott cards could be making money. What? <laughs> what? I, I don't like to think that cards gonna be making money, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, uh, this is a question for Kyle. Yes. I know you're not a fan of Joss Whedon. So. Um, I am a fan of John Speedman. Oh. Uh, I grew up on Muppet. Yeah. I like oh, yeah. him. I can just point out his flaws while still liking him. Oh, okay. Is that possible? Just... <laughs> <laughs> Such no, a it's fair. It's fair. Burn the witch! <laughs> it doesn't exist. I have seen Get the torches! you're going to give as much ado about nothing a shot when it comes out. I might. Out. I mean, I, I, I said before, he's very good at directing actors, I think. Um, I question his plotting sometimes, but then again, he didn't write the plot, much ado about nothing. Um, <laughs> Who did? What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm currently in a, um, in a master's program, so I don't have the time to write the content that I want to. But if I did have time this spring, I'd love to turn April into like Shakespeare month. And, like, yes. Yes, we yes. Oh, it's four people apparently. Yeah. Yeah. And I love you. I love the bar. <laughs> <laughs> that would open up to things like I don't know, ten things I hate about you, or um, that basketball version of Othello. <laughs> <laughs> Then this person suggested Freddy, and so then I watched it, and I have just suggested, you know what, you should watch it too. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just have to that. But, um, but I, I am just in seeing what Jocelyn will do with um, Much Ado. Very much. Um, okay, guy in hat. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. There are two guys. <laughs> you're going to have to. At the same time. All three of us, go. <laughs> Which of these two would win in an ultimate fight of the creatures of the night? <laughs> Bella from Twilight or Nomi from Showgirls? Oh! Nomi knows that scratch. Is she? 
But she's clumsy. Is it really obvious to you? Like, I'm thinking Black Swan or um, like the artist movies like that. Like, does uh, does Oscar? You mean, you mean like really Critical Darling or Oscar bait? <laughs> yeah. 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 to J.O. again. I'm not mean. <laughs> I like hope. She's She's cool. Cool. She's smart. She has good stuff. Jacket guy. Oh, okay. Um, I guess one more. Okay. Um, okay, sorry. <laughs> I had you, jacket guy. I love Megan. Hey. All of your favorite books when you were five. 
Okay. And go well, down to the end. Like, follow us down there. Yeah. 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 